So I thought I would have a go at drawing Captain America from Civil War uh, using some pigment markers. And the first thing I did was try penciling it out. And I hit a bit of a snag here, and I think I got the auto exposure wrong when I was doing the video, because all of a sudden when I was doing the penciling out, it turned all ghostly and faded out in the middle section, which is why you only see the beginning and the end of the drawing. <laughs> I wanted to shoot a video tutorial to do with the skin tones because I got on hold of a pack of the pigment marker skin tone set uh, and so I wanted to kind of showcase uh, a demonstration on how they might be used to achieve uh, a realistic kind of skin tone but then I decided that I would do the entire face as well so I would do his face mask and a little bit of background as well or using the pigment markers um, so if you want to see the the flesh tones in depth uh, in a slightly more long form uh, tutorial that's uh, on my channel then click on one of the links below and that will take you to that and that just focuses on the flesh tones talking about exactly what colors I'm using and how I'm going about achieving the effects that I'm trying to achieve. I think the reason I wanted to try and use pigment markers here is because normally when I'm doing fan art I would use uh, alcohol markers you know pro markers or whatever and I thought it'd be kind of fun to try a bit of a challenge to do a bit of fan art using the pro markers for probably a slightly more realistic approach, hopefully, uh, with what I'm doing. Anyhow, this is pigment markers on pigment marker paper. So this is the specific paper that is designed for using the pigment markers on. And it is the best kind of paper to blend the, um, the markers on, the colors on, and try and get that kind of painterly kind of effect. Uh, looking at it now, I'm wondering if whether I would have if I was just doing this as just a, a straight through kind of video, whether I would have done the flesh first and then the face mask or done it the other way around because um, as I mentioned when I'm doing the flesh tones, each one is going to affect the other. Um, so once I've done the face, that's going to affect how dark or how light I do the face mask and if I'd done the face mask first, that might have affected how dark or how light I would do the face. And I've got a feeling if I'd done the face mask first, I might have done the flesh tones a little bit darker and some of the shadows a little bit darker than they appear. So this became an exercise in using a limited palette. Um, to do the leather and the chin straps and bits on his face mask, I was still having to use the Flesh Tones pack because I didn't have many other brown or, or warmish kind of colors. So I was having to use those and blend them together, perhaps with a slightly darker, one of the darker brands that I didn't use on the face, uh, in order to try and set them apart and make it not look like it was an extension of the Flesh Tones. Bit difficult to do, but you see me layering up quite a bit as well. So once I've done some pigment markers and let it dry, I'm using the darkish brown and I'm going back over, laying down a few little lines and outlines uh, and sort of darker areas of contrast. Similarly, on the face mask, I only had a mid-blue, so what I decided to do was something I would never usually do. I decided to add blue and black, or blend blue and black together to try and do the face mask, because it's a very dark blue, with shiny effects, obviously, that I used the white blender pen for. Normally, I would never do this, because when you add black to your colors, it dulls them, uh, and makes them dark and, and kind of a bit gray kind of tinge. So I usually never use black to darken any colors, no matter when I'm doing um, alcohol markers or color pencil or paints or watercolors or anything uh, but I decided to break that rule here out of necessity rather than any other reason just for my lack of having markers. Uh, this top bit over around, and around the A for America on his, on his face mask, this was tricky to do because it was a large open area and anybody who's ever using any kind of markers, be they alcohol or pigment markers, will always probably tell you that when you're doing a large open area and trying to blend it you know, without streaking, it's kind of difficult to do and I did find it a bit of a challenge and I didn't do it totally successfully the way I would like to. Uh, but still, you know, for the purposes of, of the entire picture, I was kind of pleased enough to be able to make my peace with it. So the big question, why Team Cap and not Team Iron Man? Um, well, when I read the comic book for Civil War, uh, I immediately identified with Captain America, his character and his reasons for doing what he was doing. Uh, I loved the idea of him being an independent superhero, being able to do what he felt was right and deal with what he felt was right, rather than be a government stooge who could be sent into a situation where he didn't agree with why he was being sent there to do what he was being sent to do. I saw the Civil War movie recently and absolutely loved it. thought it was terrific. I think one of my favorite characters is the Winter Soldier. I know he's a bit of an anti-hero, you know, with that dark past, but I think that makes him a much more complex and interesting hero. Uh, so I think you might see a Winter Soldier bit of fan art uh, in the next couple of months if I can squeeze a bit of time into my timetable. That's pretty much it. Please let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of it, what you think of the likeness, and check out some of the other links down there for some of the other pigment marker drawings that I've done recently. Thanks for watching.